Uh, dear colleagues, uh, let's start our workshop. We have uh, 10 uh, talks today. It will be divided into two sessions. The first one contains uh, five talks. And the first talk of, from the PI of the project uh, from David Buckley. David, please, 15 minutes and uh, keep in mind uh, possible questions. Thank you very much, Dimitri. And um, hello, colleagues. Uh, I will be giving an overview of, um, of this uh, program and the rest of the speakers all today will be uh, talking to different aspects of, of this. So uh, let me begin. I'm just going to um, share my screen, um, Dimitri. Okay, so the, um, the proposal that is uh, now on the table has, uh, has a long um, history uh, dating back uh, um, virtually three years now. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit about how we got where we are. Um, but as I say, the, the main thing that I want to do in my talk is just give an overview of, um, of the sort of rationale for this um, proposal and the details of some aspects will be taken forward by um, other speakers in this session. So uh, the BRICS Astronomy Working Group um, began uh, back in 2015 uh, following discussions at a ministerial levels about how to promote science and technology advancement uh, amongst BRICS countries. Uh, and actually astronomy became one of those uh, particular themes uh, which was um, adopted um, and uh, has now developed into a fully fledged astronomy program within BRICS run by uh, the Astronomy Working Group whose secretariat is currently uh, in South Africa. Um, there's many reasons to, um, to consider having such a, an astronomy working group because there are many common aspirations that the BRICS countries share, both scientifically and technologically. Um, and one of the big challenges in, in uh, the world at the moment is developing human capacity developments and seeing how our activities can have a wider benefit to, to our societies. And um, uh, Carolina Odman will be talking um, uh, later about these sort of aspects. So the idea of the um, flagship program was to develop something that would leverage the existing and future facilities that the BRICS countries have or have access to. And in particular, to develop a, a really internationally competitive astronomy program, something that has a degree of uniqueness that is uh, above whatever else is being um, considered at the moment. And so this is what the flagship project um, has developed into. And it focuses scientifically on two of the most enormous potentials in astronomy, which is uh, survey programs that will happen over the next two de decades. And in particular, the science and the data and compute challenging challenges that those um, survey programs uh, involve. And so the program sort of uh, has evolved and I'll talk a bit about the history of that. But currently the focus in terms of what, um, what these big survey programs are uh, in the optical, it's the Rubin Observatory um, as LSST uh, is now um, renamed. Um, so this telescope, which is um, confusingly now called the Simoni Survey Telescope of the Vera C. Rubin Observatory will conduct uh, when it begins operations probably in uh, 2023, uh, a 10-year survey of the southern sky. Um, and it will be uh, the highest, um, uh, well, it'll be the deepest uh, and most complete survey ever undertaken. Uh, and a number of BRICS countries are now becoming actively involved or have been actively involved in LSCST. Uh, and this is one aspect of our joint science interests that the proposed uh, BRICS 
uh, Intelligent Telescope and Dayton Network will leverage. The other is, of course, the future in uh, the radio wavelengths, which is the square kilometer array. Uh, this uh, equally large um, and ambitious project uh, is due to uh, begin operations probably within six years or so. Um, and I think Russ will be talking specifically uh, to SKA. And it also presents uh, similar data challenges and big compute challenges, which this program uh, will address. So the idea is that we exploit um, our existing BRICS facility ac uh, facilities or access to facilities. Uh, and just here is a slide that shows uh, some of the uh, facilities that uh, we have within the BRICS um, family uh, or have access to. So Gemini South, of course, is not um, owned by Brazil, but Brazil has uh, uh, access to that telescope and other telescopes, I might add, as well. Uh, SALT is obviously the South African uh, premier optical telescope, the largest single optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere at present. The six metre uh, telescope in Russia uh, is decades old, and, uh, but is still uh, a very compelling instrument. In India, the 3.6 metre Devastal telescope has just begun operations, and in China, LAMOST, which is also a survey instrument, has been operating for some time and producing forefront science. And amongst the radio facilities, um, Meerkat uh, began operations in 2018 and is doing uh, forefront science. GMRT, the millimeter wave radio telescope, FAST, uh, these are also big facilities and supported by what would probably be considered somewhat more modest, but still important facilities in both Brazil um, and in Russia. So the idea of our program is to take advantage of the fact that we have these existing facilities, uh, but also look forward to what might happen in the future should this program be adopted and funded at the level that we hope. So the history of the flagship program goes back as I say, to uh, three years to the uh, BRICS Astronomy Working Group meeting in Pune in India. Uh, and at that meeting, it was decided that uh, uh, BRICS Astronomy Working Group should really push for something compelling, something that would be internationally competitive, and something that would, of course, uh, have a larger budget than the typical uh, several year um, collaborative projects that are currently funded. Uh, and so an announcement call was made in early 2018 for proposal concept notes. Uh, and 18 of these short proposal concepts uh, were discussed at the following uh, BRICS Astronomy Working Group meeting, which was in October uh, 2018 in South Africa. And uh, Basically, what happened was that a task force uh, assessed uh, all of those 18 proposals through a range of different criteria. Um, and these are all listed in detail. I won't talk to all of them. You can read them um, as I'm speaking. Um, but a lot of it had to do with the fact that we wanted these programs to potentially involve all of the BRICS countries or as many as possible. Um, and to be scientifically impactful and competitive and ideally unique in some aspect. It should also be clear that it would have a huge impact on things like uh, human capacity development, development of young researchers within our countries, and of course, the alignment with developments uh, of the fourth industrial revolution paradigm, for example, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, and so all of these um, 18 concept notes were reviewed and the, the decision that was made at that meeting was that as far as possible, uh, there was a desire to combine the proposals where there was an appropriate common theme. And what came out of that were three common themes. One of them was on transient um, follow-up and uh, transient astronomy. The other was on big data and big 
compute infrastructure um, in the era of large surveys like SKA and um, uh, LSST. Um, and the last one was uh, a cosmology related uh, study of neutral hydrogen, 21 centimeter. So um, three of us, myself, um, Russ Taylor uh, and Ying Jing Ma uh, were then tasks were tasked with developing full proposals, which would then be uh, presented at the following BRICS astronomy group meeting. Um, and the outcome of that was that uh, of the three proposals that were presented last year in Rio at that meeting, uh, there was a decision that the two, uh, number one and number two listed there would be combined into a merged proposal. Uh, it was already clearly apparent that there were um, excellent synergies between those two proposals uh, and in fact both talked to different aspects of those proposals so it made eminent sense uh, to combine them and that's what the final uh, proposal that we have on the table now represents so the opportunities this program presents are, uh, are quite wide and varied um, it, it has synergies with the existing facilities that I already discussed and future ones that will be developed. Um, there's a big potential for um, leveraging support of human capacity development for young researchers and students. Uh, and our proposal includes the funding of postdoctoral fellowships, scholarships uh, involved. Uh, it will, could involve co-supervision um, with other BRICS countries annual meetings and workshops. Um, then, of course, the technical collaboration opportunities are also quite uh, apparent. So because hardware and instrumentation forms one important leg of this proposal, um, there is uh, excellent potential for um, uh, engineers, um, software developers, uh, instrument makers uh, to collaborate and work together. Um, and so things like instruments and telescopes, the software, the sort of machine learning, uh, the cyber infrastructure, uh, and so on. These are all potential areas where collaboration between uh, BRICS countries could, um, could be uh, expanded. And then, of course, the wider aspects to science and society, um, which are also in, in our um, within these, uh, in the world today, these are um, equally as important as the science, if not more so from a politician's standpoint. So the program will be a phased um, approach uh, with the potential to expand. Uh, I might just add here that back at the beginning when this was first uh, adopted by the uh, Astronomy Working Group and the Secretariat in South Africa, we were told to think big think outside the box of just a three-year program with the relatively modest amount of funding that those programs typically get. And so this is what led to what some people might think is a outlandishly ambitious program, but this is something which we believe, uh, certainly in this um, current proposal, is something that's fully realizable with what we consider to be a relatively modest amount of investment. So it will utilize um, the ex existing facilities, as I've already mentioned. Um, it will spend initial effort on networking the facilities that we have access to for more efficient response to transient alerts or survey follow-up science. Um, so a lot of the work that we're developing already or will be developed in the era of the um, Rubin Observatory, the sort of uh, automated software systems, uh, the brokers, the event brokers, the marshals that decide on appropriate follow-up. This is all part and parcel of what this program will become. And of course, it's quite a challenge because uh, the telescopes in, that we jointly have or that, that we have within our, um, our countries are a, quite a heterogeneous collection of telescopes of different ages and, and capabilities. But nonetheless, our experience in South Africa has shown that it's a tractable um, problem. So the first phase will be to develop a, a network utilizing the existing facilities, and it will leverage some of the experience that SAO is currently 
um, uh, has in, in a new initiative that started this year, led by my colleague Stephen Potter at the SAO, uh, which is to basically turn our existing observatory Sutherland site into an integrated intelligent machine for transient and survey follow-up. Uh, and this project is going very successfully, but the idea is that it would expand within this program to be something similar in all of our countries. So the second phase would be the development of new um, infrastructure. Uh, and this is sort of leveraged by uh, two of our uh, partners, um, China and, and Russia, and we'll be hearing from uh, both um, groups uh, later in the program, uh, to develop um, wider, deeper, faster types of, um, uh, of transient uh, detection facilities. Uh, and this diagram here shows the various uh, sort of attributes of where um, different surveys sit in terms of their cadence. In other words, the time uh, resolution that these um, surveys have versus the depth of the survey. And the BRICS um, transient network is indicated as that gray circle that sits a little bit less, uh, a little bit uh, to the left of ATLAS. Um, and so, that's the new discovery space that we would hope that the second phase should the funding allow um, let us in, develop into. And that second phase has quite an ambitious idea to survey um, basically ultimately uh, all four pi steradians of the sky um, with uh, ideally a better than one hour cadence. So being a one meter telescope, it will not go as deep as, for example, the LSST survey, uh, but it would have a cadence which is much faster. Uh, LSST's cadence is only something like a few days, typically. Um, so this is um, building on the ideas that have been put forward by uh, my Chinese um, uh, co-PI, country co-PI on this proposal, Jifeng Yu. Uh, who will be speaking about this proposal or about this program that the Chinese are hoping to develop called Citian. And there would be an expectation that, that BRICS could become part of the wider second phase development of, of this um, program. So already uh, telescope design work has begun by the two respective groups. Um, and one of the initial things that we could do with our, with our program would be uh, to do some uh, design trade-off studies, uh, to work together on, on looking at the potentials for designs and so on, and maybe also into detector technology as well. So the overall benefits um, are outlined in these bullet points here. Um, the bottom line is we believe that this ticks all of the boxes for the criteria of a flagship. Uh, Good. flagship I'm sorry, uh, one minute. Yes, I'm just, this is my last slide, Dimitri. Um, uh, yeah, so we believe that it, um, uh, it hits all of the important points uh, that we think a flagship project uh, needs, to, uh, needs to have. Um, and with that, uh, that was my last slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, for very comprehensive overview of the project. Uh, if you have somebody have question, please ask right now. If not, thank you again, David, and we'll go to the next uh, speaker. Uh, Russ Taylor will speak about big data issues in the project.